Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I am Penge, and welcome to Insurmountable, which is a game about climbing a really big mountain. Probably that one right there on the menu screen, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Now I know nothing about mountain climbing, except that it's very hard to do, and it's very dangerous, and it's very, very cold indeed. But other than that, I have no idea, not really. I mean, okay, I know they use rope. Rope is an important thing in mountain climbing. You need a rope if you want to go and do the climbing, so you know, I know they use rope. And actually, do you know what? They have shoes, don't they? With little pointy spikes on. I think that's mountain climbing. And they stick the kind of pointy spikes into, you know, cracks in the rock or into ice or whatever. And that helps them climb up as well. So yeah, we've got rope and we've got shoes with pointy spikes in, which probably have a proper name, but I don't know what it is. Do you know what? I know way more about mountain climbing than I originally thought. This is going to be absolutely fine. What could possibly go wrong? So this is a roguelike with permadeath. So we had best be a little bit careful. And the idea is that we climb up a mountain, obviously. We choose our own path as we go. We have to look after ourselves to make sure we survive. So we have various sort of things we need to take care of, like heat and energy and all that kind of stuff. And we have to deal with events and encounters as they pop up. And it's all procedurally generated. So we're sort of telling our own story here, which I do like the idea of. So without any further ado, let's get some very warm underpants on and go climb up a mountain. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is choose our mountaineer. So who are we going to play as? And we can choose between either the adventurer, the scientist, or the journalist. Okay, and it looks like each one of them has got their own little sort of special skill and their own items as well. Okay, so adventurer has the regeneration skill. That's very time lordy. Whenever you use a consumable item, you recover some health. Okay, that sounds good. And they start with a tent. That seems like a logical thing to take with you whilst you're climbing up a mountain. And some climbing gloves, again, sensible and some canned food. Okay, they all sound like good things. Okay, so the adventure sounds pretty good, pretty solid, as you would expect from an adventurer. You know, they sound like the kind of person that knows what they're doing when they climb up a mountain. Um, scientist. Okay, so what do you get? Analysis. Take some time to gain some experience. So you can spend a little bit of time to get some experience points. Okay, so you analyze the surroundings or whatever, and you start with eagle eye, increases camera zoom until next movement. Okay, so you have another special ability as well. So you've got analysis and eagle eye. You also start with the tent, again, very sensible. A hiking staff. Okay, so you go walking with a great big staff and you've got yourself a warm cap. Okay, again, that makes sense. Something on your head, very sensible when climbing up a mountain. And then the journalist. Okay, so what do you do? Thirst for knowledge. Gain some energy, body temperature, oxygen, sanity, and health whenever you level up. So those things there are our kind of main stats, if you like. That sounds quite good. Getting a little top up to all of your stats when you level up seems quite a sensible thing. And you have yourself some fur gloves, again, very clever, a climbing axe, that could be very handy. You've got some heavy boots on and you have some, you've got some hot tea. Right, we're being the journalist. <laughs> we're being the journalist because they bothered to bring the right thing to climb up a mountain. They've bought some tea. Plus 33 body temperature from drinking a lovely flask of lovely hot tea. Okay, however, I am noticing that the journalist does not appear to have a tent. Um, journalist, I would have thought a tent would be kind of one of the most important things you could take. Do you know what though? It's fine, they've got some hot tea. Maybe we'll just drink that and we'll have a nice sort of, you know, nice warm glow about us. And we won't need a tent as we sleep on the side of a mountain. I'm sure it'll be fine. Right, do you know what? Let's play as a journalist solely because they have a flask of hot tea. And in terms of difficulty, we're going to play on normal difficulty because we haven't unlocked the other two. Now I imagine when you complete normal, you unlock hard difficulty. And then when you complete hard difficulty, you unlock insurmountable difficulty, which slightly worryingly says just here, Death always climbs with you. Crikey, that's a bit serious, isn't it? Has he bought some tea as well? Okay, right, so let's go to normal difficulty, please. Can you make it to the top? The standard difficulty, challenging but doable. Absolutely, that sounds fine. Then we have to pick a mountain, but we only have one choice. We can only climb up mountain number one, but that's fine. I mean, you know, it looks mountainy and rocky. It's got a pointy bit at the top, which is, you know, where we're going to try and get to. So, yep, yeah, that seems absolutely fine. Mountain one sounds good. So now we have to choose our route up the mountain. There are three routes for us to choose from. So route one has firm snow, which means that we move quicker on snow, which is okay. I mean, we're climbing up a mountain. That might be quite handy. However, there is also thin air on route one, which doesn't sound very good at all, does it? Breathing is harder on this route. I don't like the sound of that. I think we do not want to do anything that makes breathing any harder than it needs to be because breathing is important for, you know, staying alive and not being dead. So I don't think we choose route one because that sounds a little bit unpleasant. So let's discount route one on account of, you know, I like being able to breathe properly. So route two here, sturdy rock. So we're going to move a little bit quicker on stony terrain. And then there's eerie surroundings. Shadows and noises follow you on this route. So we're going to lose a little bit of sanity because we're being sort of creeped out by whatever we think is following us. 
Okay. And then Route 3 has stable ice, so we work better on ice, and also eerie surroundings. Okay. Okay. So discount Route 1. Routes 2 and 3 are sort of the same thing, except we're going to work better on rock with Route 2 or ice with Route 3. Um, let's go down rock, shall we? Let's go down this one here. Route 2, sturdy rock, eerie surroundings. Yeah, that sounds fine. Let's go down Route 2. And here we go. So we have ourselves our first little story pop-up thing. So it says, your gaze drifts up to the summit. The island is full of secrets and could provide material for stories for years to come. How could it have appeared so suddenly? Who are the ominous occupiers who left traces throughout the entire mountain range? Did they really conduct experiments here? And if so, what kind? You will leave no stone unturned to solve the island's mysteries, but to do that, you will have to make your way up to the peak. Okie doke. So we're a journalist. We want to figure out what's going on here. There's some sort of story happening that we're digging into, and we need to make our way up to the top. Okay, so we're going to get, for just you know, accepting this and just for being here, 235 XP. Okay, that seems quite generous. Splendid stuff. So here we go. Now, where are we? Oh, we're all the way down there. Okay, hello us. Hi there. So we just sort of stood down here. There's some lovely trees. And as you can see, it's all hex based. So we're going to be sort of hopping around lots of hexes. And there are little markers telling us where there are things of interest. So there's something just there. There's something down there. However, can we see where we need to go? We need to go to the peak. The peak, which is all the way up there. So we've got to make our way from here, on this, you know, relatively easy looking sort of terrain, all the way to up, oh, hang on, there's a tree in the way, all the way to up there. I mean, that that's quite the climb. That is quite a climb, but okay, that's fine. Right, let's have a look at what we've got down here. So the sort of blue bar going around our portrait, that's our experience points. And then we have ourselves sanity over there. Then we've got body temperature. Then we have energy. Then we have oxygen. And then the red bar at the bottom is health. Okay, right, so... Uh, it's currently seven o'clock in the morning. Let's go over here. I think it would make sense to go and have a look over here. That implies to me, that little sort of icon there, that there's some sort of item over here, some sort of collectible thing that we might be interested in. And it's right over there. We might as well just sort of stroll over to it. So there we go. That's all we do. We walk over to it. Some time passes and there are some ruins. Nearby an abandoned camp, there are a couple of empty oxygen bottles. You could take the time to search the tents. Okay. Yeah, so I thoroughly searched the tents. That does take a long time. So searching the tents takes 6.8 hours. Really? How big are the tents? My goodness me. Have a quick look around for three and a half hours. <laughs> that is not quick. A three and a half hour look around isn't quick at all or just do nothing. Do you know what? It's right next to us. It's right next to where we started. Let's have a very, very thorough search of whatever's in these tents. You find two bottled oxygen tanks. That sounds amazing. Okay, right, so we're going to get a load more XP. I think we might level up from that. And yeah, oxygen bottle things. Yes, very handy. Thank you very much. Take those. So confirm that and then we'll level up because we might as well. Although, although we do get stuff back when we level up, don't we? We get ourselves energy and sanity and all that kind of stuff because we're the journalists. That's what we do. That's our special sort of skill thingamajig. Is it worth waiting to level up until our sanity, body temperature, oxygen, and energy, you know, or whatever, any of those, all of those, have come down a bit, and then level up to top them back up. Because if we do it right now, that might be a bit of a waste. I think we might want to leave it. I think we could leave that. Now, I noticed there is something down there. It looks like possibly, what's that, like a cave of some description. And we might have to go and look for caves to sleep in. But right now, it's, what is it? It's about, yeah, ten past two. Where shall we head now? I don't think we need to head to a cave. Let's head... I can't see any of the marker things that are remarkably close by. And we do need to start heading that way, up there. Um, let's go to... There's something just there. That looks like a cave just there. By the time we're there, that might... It might be relatively late. Joe, you know what? Let's go over there. Let's head over to that thing over there. I mean, yeah, look, we do take a nice leisurely kind of stroll. There we go. So hop down the side of that. It's very pretty. It's very pretty to look at. It looks very nice indeed. Right. So we're just going to make our way over there. Um, OK. I mean, it looks like our journalist here is in absolutely no rush to go over there. So uh, let's just pick things up with our journalist friend when they're over at this marker. OK. So we arrived. We enter a cave. It's dry and sheltered from the wind. OK. Right. We're not particularly tired, I don't imagine, right now. I don't think we're particularly exhausted. We're down on energy a tiny, tiny bit. But I don't think we need to lie down and have a sleep. Okay, no, we'll leave the cave. It's fine. It was a lovely cave. Very nice indeed. But I don't think we need to care too much about it. 
However, it has got us over here. So where should we head next? There's something over there. What is that icon telling us? Ah, and just there. There's something. Oh, oh, and there's a very shiny looking thing over there. However, that's not in the direction that we're we're sort of yeah we've gone in so far. That means we have to crisscross all the way back over there. Do we want to do that, or do we want to start sort of heading upwards a little bit? It might be worth going up that way. There's another cave over there. But then, do we need a cave right now? We don't need to sleep right now, I don't think. Let's head over. Do you know what? It might take us ages. And it might be, yeah, we might have made a mistake coming over to this cave. But I think, let's head over to the shiny looking sort of spinny icon thing. How long is that going to take? It's going to take three hours and 36 minutes. Okay, right. Head over that way, please, my friend. Let's go over there. Let's have a little look at what the shiny thing is. And then possibly from there, we could go to there. Because there's another item there. And then go up to there. What is that there? What's on that icon? Come on, spin around a little bit. It looks like hair. I oh, know it's not headphones. I thought it was headphones. It's um, it's two people. There might be somebody else there. Some sort of, you know, person interaction. Okay, no, that's fine. That's fine. So we'll head over here. See whatever the shiny thing is. And then we'll head back to there. And then head up there. And then who knows from there? I don't quite know what's going to be happening. But, I mean, yeah, they're taking their time. They are taking their time. They're taking a very leisurely stroll over there. I mean, if we could speed things up a bit, that would be marvellous. But it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, we're, we're mountain climbing. We don't want to rush because we're going to fall and, you know, break our arm or something. So let's just take a lovely leisurely walk through the mountainside and go over to the shiny thing just here. Okay, night has fallen. So it's become a little bit dark and I imagine a bit cold as well. So this is a shrine. Okay, an old woman sits in front of a crooked hood. She wears a friendly toothless smile and motions you to sit with her to recharge your strength. You do as she suggests and regain, oh, health or warmth. Okay, have we lost any warmth yet? We've lost a tiny bit of warmth because it's night time. So we've not lost any health, I don't think. No, do you know what? Let's sit by the, uh, whatever it is, the toothless old woman's fire. There we go. Thank you, toothless old woman. So we've topped up our heat there which is quite good. So body temperature has gone back up. Um, okay, let's do what we're going to do. Let's climb up to that thing. Let's see what that thing is just there. Now, I'm wondering whether we should level up. Should we level up? When we get to this point, we'll level up because it might be giving us some great advantages when we level up to, you know, have the ability to move quicker or climb faster or something. So um, yeah, we might want to possibly think about that. Right, hang on. Let's get to here first, though. Let's get to here and then we can level up. So what is over here? Cans. A thin wisp of smoke rises up into the sky in front of you. You turn a corner around the wall of a cliff and discover a campfire, flames already licking the sides of the cans placed around it. Okay, hang on. Cans. Cans of fuel, I assume. So I collect snow to put out the fire. That does make us lose a lot of temperature, but we can get it back. We could get it back with our level up. Stamp on the fire to put it out. That sounds terrible or do nothing. Do you know what? Let's grab some snow. We're a little bit cold, but that's fine. Your fingers feel numb, but you have gathered enough snow to extinguish the flames. After searching the area to make sure the owner is not stuck in a nearby crevasse, you take the cans and move on. Oh, it's a can of food. Oh, marvellous. And 280 XP. Okay, we'll take the can of food. Splendid. Thank you very much. And now I think we will level up because that gets us some sanity back. It gets us body temperature. It gets us energy. So yes, please, let's level up. Okay, choose your specialization. Oh, crikeys. Okay, special terrain expert. So we're specialized in dangerous terrain. So whenever you suffer a dangerous terrain event, you gain some experience. Okay, so you're strong at using the terrain to your advantage, but all bonuses are dependent on terrain. Okay, yeah, so if we're walking along something that's not dangerous, that's going to do nothing at all. A steep climber, specialized in moving through steep terrain. So master climber is an active ability, reduced energy cost on all terrain. That sounds quite good. Oh, it's a it's a, an ability that lasts a certain amount of time. For three hours, we can have a 40% energy drop on, you know, sort of climbing about and doing stuff. Strong at climbing fast, direct routes to the summit. But yes, if we just go up there, we might miss out on nice events and experience and such. Or a consumables expert. I like the sound of that. Specialized in utilizing consumables. Whenever you use a consumable item, you get some sanity. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Um, strong at getting the most out of your consumable items. All bonuses are dependent on finding consumable items. I mean, we have a few of those. Let's go down a consumables expert. There we go. Do you want to choose comfort of home one? <laughs> yes, please. It sounds very lovely indeed. 
Um, okay, and there we go. Because we're the journalists and we've leveled up, we've got our stats looking pretty good. Okay, what time is it? It's about quarter to nine. Let's go up to here, because that's not too far away. So we have to climb, do you have to go down to go back up again? Yes, we climb down to go back up. But let's see what this is, because that doesn't take us that long to get there at all. It's gonna we're gonna be at this point by about nine o'clock. And then maybe after that we could have a sleep, possibly. Maybe have a little tiny sleep after that. But here we go. What is this? And I imagine this is another person. No, it's a goat. Hello, goat. How are you? You encounter a common mountain goat. It's nibbling on some herbs. Okay. I can chase it away. I can approach it in a friendly manner. I can feed it some food, or I can just completely ignore it and this uh, yeah, the event ends. Um, I mean, is it going to like us? And what's the point of approaching it? What is the purpose of approaching a goat? What is going to happen with this? I mean, it's not going to come with us. It's not going to be a handy companion, I don't imagine. I think, if anything, if we try and approach it, it's going to attack us with the with the yeah the the stabby horns on its head there. Um, how about we try and chase it away? How about we try and make it go away? But then I kind of think maybe we should approach it in a friendly manner because maybe it will surprise us. Maybe it will surprise us. Do you know what? Let's let's try and be friendly to the goat. You know, we're on we're in the goat's home essentially. We're kind of, you know, we're on this goat's terrain. Let's try and be nice to it. Let's see what happens, shall we? The goat gives a friendly bleat and shares its herbs with you. See, we were going to we were going to chase the goat away, but no, no, it's fine. It's worked out quite nicely. So what do we get? We get 270 XP, which is another level up, I think. And we get a moon herb. So our sanity gets topped up, but we lose a bit of health because we're eating random mountain herbs. Okay, yeah, brilliant. Take that, pop that into the backpack, confirm that, and we've leveled up again. Okay, now do we need to have a sleep? Do we need to have a sleep right now? The only thing is we don't have a tent, do we? We don't have a tent, so, I mean, we're going to get some energy back. We're on, yes, yeah, so we top up our energy. We'd lose a heck of a lot of body temperature and some sanity. And if we had a long sleep, we would almost freeze to death. I don't think we need to have a sleep right now. I think our energy is looking pretty good. We're, yeah, we're ready. We're raring to go. Um, let's go. I mean, there is a cave. There is a cave up that way. So we could go and have a look over there. Hang on. Hang on. There we go. That lets us look around a bit more freely. Or we could head over in... There's more shiny things up there. We could head over in that direction. Okay, we need to get up there, I think. Oh, crikey. Okay, that's a very, very long route, and it's going to take up most of our energy. Okay, right. Hang on a second. Hang on. Head to wherever that thing... Oh, no, hang on a minute. Clear all the clear all the waypoints. Um, Go to... I can't quite see where that cave is. I'm not quite sure if we can move around. No, I think we have to sort of focus mostly on us. Um, Okay, let's head over to there, because that should put us slightly nearer to that cave. And then hopefully the cave will be empty and then we can have a sleep in the cave where it won't be as cold. Um, however, it looks like it's going to take absolutely ages to get over there. So, right, let's just wait for our journalist friend here to just do a lot of climbing and walking and all that kind of stuff. And eventually they will be over there near to a cave. Oh, hang on, a random encounter has happened. You once again encounter a common mountain goat. It's standing behind a rock and using its head to point emphatically in the direction you're walking. Is it trying to warn you? Okay, I hide behind the rock. I ignore the goat. Okay, let's hide behind the rock. Because again, you know, this goat knows more about this terrain than we do because it lives here. Let's hide behind the rock. Walking just a few feet ahead of you is a large wild cat. It notices neither you nor the goat. My goat friends are saving me. Oh my goodness me. Right, so we get some more XP for that. Thank you, goat friend. Okay, and it's kind of stopped us here. So that was a random event. I don't think it was on, you know, it wasn't marked on the map or whatever. Um, okay, right, so now... What can we do? Can we go and see where that cave is? Yeah, I don't think we can. Um, I have noticed, however, there is a little bit of a speed up button there, which is quite nice. Um, okay, keep going to there. But look at that. They walk a little bit quicker. I mean, yeah, they're not going at blinding pace, but they're going significantly faster. So if we hop up here, yeah, we need to get into that cave because our energy is coming down quite a bit and we need to go and have a bit of a sleep. So hopefully we've arrived there. Oh, there you go. Let's just wander over to here then. So I hope it's a cave. Uh, it's drying shelter from the wind. At the rear of the cave, you notice a faint shimmer of light. Okay. Do we lie down and sleep or follow the light? Um, I mean, how much energy have we got? We're just below half. Okay, let's... Uh, but then we follow the light and we're exhausted. That means we're not going to be able to get our energy back properly. Um, we have got the tea. 
We have got the tea. We could drink the tea to get our body temperature back up. Let's follow the light, shall we? You follow the light. As you approach, you realise that it's coming from hundreds of fireflies. Fascinating. Okay, so we get our sanity. Ah, our sanity comes back because we've seen a lovely, beautiful thing. And we get some XP. Okay, so now we're at the entrance. Right, okay, splendid. That worked out very well indeed. Uh, let's lie down and have a sleep. Right, we're in a cave. So no tent needed. We're going to get energy back. And our body temperature is going to tick up quite nicely. And then, hang on, what if we have a long sleep? 40 energy back. Yeah, that seems, that seems the best thing for us to do. Let's have a very long, lovely sleep in a cave on the side of a mountain. Because I'm sure that's wonderful. I don't know if I'd feel very energised after doing that. But there we go. Daybreak, it's a clear day because, yeah, there's weather as well. And, yeah, energy's looking good. Everything is looking splendid in terms of stats. Okay. So now I think we need to head kind of that way. There is something over there. So there we go. Right, head over this way. And then we'll try and get to whatever that item is over there, maybe. Oh, there are all sorts of exciting things over here. Right, so first things first, head over to there. I don't quite know why we're doing that. Oh, because we can't go on that tile there because that's like blocked or something. Okay, that's fine. So head over to this thing. Let's see what that might be. Is it going to be something useful? I do not know. I hope so. Okay. A weird kind of empty cage. Under a tarp, you discover a large empty cage. Tufts of brownish fur are stuck between the bars. I enter the cage. I continue my journey. Um, I think entering a cage on the side of a mountain that we just found that was covered in a massive tarpaulin sounds like a terrible idea. Um, no, normally I'd go, yeah, why not? Let's try it. That's going to completely obliterate our sanity. And possibly we might get stuck in a cage forever and die on the side of a mountain in a cage. So, no, no. Let's not do that at all. That sounds like a very silly idea. Um, there is a cave over there, but we don't necessarily need a cave right now. Um, let's head over to that. Let's go to there, because that is another potential item thing. Hopefully slightly better than a weird cage. And then, yeah, it looks like actually there's something round there. There's something over there. So we could make our way round that way. Okay, a chest. You discover a buried chest. Okay, dig out the chest. Takes up quite a chunk of energy and a bit of time. Um, yeah, okay, got a plan. You find some equipment. Okay, let's take the equipment. What is it? A warm cap. Yes, put that upon our head, please. Wear the warm cap. So body temperature goes up when moving and body temperature goes up when we're resting or in a vent. Okay, that is perfect. Okay, that seems good. Do we level up to get some sanity back and some energy? Do you know what? Yes, because I don't think it'll take that long to level up again. So let's level up so we can now have... Herbology, tea and herbs are more effective. I mean, this is perfect. Or comfort of home too, we get more sanity. Let's have herbology. Tea is even more effective. That seems absolutely hugely appropriate. Yes, please. <laughs> there we go. So we're very, very good at tea and herbs. Okay. Um, now, do we want to go to there? When's it going to get to night time? The night begins with sunset, seven o'clock. I think, hang on, where there's a, is there a cave? Yeah, there's a cave down there. So how about we head on to this thing. Let's have a look at what that is. We're going on to some snow there, I think, which might slow us down a little bit. So head up to this. Have a look at what that is. And it might get relatively... It might get dark quite soon. It's going to get to night time. And there's a cave down there. So we'll head into the cave and then have a little sleep. Uh, you catch a whiff of a tantalising fragrance on the breeze. You follow your nose, which leads you to an indigenous man standing in front of a ramshackle hut, a mysterious brew bubbling away in his brewing kettle as it sits over an open fire. The scent alone is invigorating. What sort of effect might the brew have on you if you were to take a sip? <laughs> oh no, do we go and drink some mysterious mountain brew or not? Um, approach the stranger and ask for a taste. So it takes us 2.1 hours to drink this uh, this mysterious brew. And it will take us... It costs a little bit of temperature, but that's fine. Sneak up to the kettle and steal it or continue the journey. Um, do you know what? It might be amazing. It might be terrible. I don't know. If it's terrible, we'll have some tea afterwards. It's all fine. Let's ask for a taste. Let's have a chat with this random mountain bloke. Uh, when the stranger notices you, he beams. Before you can say anything... He dips a ladle into the kettle and offers you a sample of the brew. And that's not all. He plucks a few herbs hanging from the nearby drying line and offers them to you as well. You are overwhelmed by his hospitality, but you feel like you can't accept both. You don't want to seem greedy. Okay, so we can either have the brew. Ah, it's a good thing. He's not trying to drug us and steal all our things and chuck us off the side of a mountain. Excellent. We get some XP. 
and we can get some energy back or the herbs gives us another moon herb they already have let's drink the brew because our energy is looking a little bit low so let us drink the brew there we go thank you very much nice lovely fresh brew now do we just head down to that cave our energy is looking good oh hang on there's a magic shiny thing over there right we're going to the magic shiny thing it's got a sunshine on it. Hang on, right, quickly, quickly, journalist fellow. Head over to the magic shiny thing. Okay, here we go. Magic shiny thing, reveal yourself. A stone goat. Okay, our journey has been quite goat heavy thus far. You rub your eyes in wonder. The boulder in front of you has a strange, unnatural shape. You take a closer look. Two spires of rock seem to be growing out of an elongated skull carved from stone. There's even the suggestion of a beard on its chin. You don't know why, but it makes you happy to see this monument to the mountain goats. I mean, I think we're becoming friends with the goats. We've done we've done many good things with the lovely goats of this mountain. We've been very nice to them, and they've helped us out. So, oh, that's good. We get sanity back, and we have ourselves some more XP. So we've leveled up again. Okay, I think we might keep a hold of that level up for now. Keep a hold of that level up. Um, okay. So where do we go now? There are There's lots of shiny things around the place. I do like a shiny thing. Um, I mean, we could head over to that one. Head over to that shiny thing. It looks very similar to this shiny thing. And then head round to that over there. But there are some items over there that could be useful. Do you know what? Oh, oh, no, that's... Okay, no, that's a very circuitous route. Let's not go to that shiny thing because we could be there all day. Um... Let's head over to... Oh, hang on a second. Hang on. Let's head to that, because that's some sort of interaction with a person. And then we'll head up the mountain that way. Maybe go to get that item there. Then maybe head up that way, possibly, and then across to there. I'm not entirely sure if we can do all that kind of stuff, because, you know, we've got to climb a mountain and such, and it seems like quite hard work. In fact, our energy is coming down quite considerably. Um, right, okay. Is there a cave? There's a cave over there. There's a cave over there. We might need to head over to the cave and have a bit of a daytime nap, I think. Um, but OK, let's see what this is doing first. Let's have a look at this. Here, hang on. Are we on the right thing? Is that where we want to be? No, because that's where the thing... Oh, bother. OK, hang on. Right, climb back down. <laughs> Sorry. There we go. Right. What is this? A mountain hare. You hear a soft squeaking coming from somewhere. You take a look around and discover a mountain hare cowering inside a rock fissure. It trembles as you approach, but does not try to flee. You suspect it might be injured. Okay, so kill it. I imagine we get some food. Help it. That does take up one of our moon herbs. That's okay. We can cope without the moon herb. Or we can just leave it alone. Let's help it. Let's help the animals. You prefer a handful of herbs to terrified animals uh, to the animal, which it nibbles eagerly. Its trembling eases, allowing you to inspect its hind legs. Broken. You make a splint out of a branch and bind it to the injured leg. The hare still doesn't stand much chance of surviving, but at least it has more hope now than it did. Okay, so our sanity gets topped up and we get some more XP. Okay, but now our energy is very, very low indeed. I don't think we have anything. Oh, we've got some canned food. We do have a bit of food to give us some energy. If we have that, will that get us through to the next night time? I don't think it will. I do not think it will. Uh, we might want to head over to that cave there. Yeah, let's head over to the cave. Let's have a sleep in a cave. We'll come back and grab all these other bits and bobs. We are passing through a tile with an event thing on it. I wonder if that will trigger because we're passing through. I do not know. We will see. Yes, it does. A camp. You discover an intact tent. There's nobody in sight, but the embers in the fire pit are still glowing. The camp is obviously being used by someone. It could contain valuable items. So we can rob somebody blind of the things they might need to live or just let let you know let it slide and let them keep their useful things that keep them alive. I don't think in all good in all good conscience we can ransack somebody's tent who is evidently around the place. Because I wouldn't like it if someone did that to us if we had a tent, which we don't. So I don't think we should do it to someone else. Let's continue our journey onwards. Let's get up into this cave and have a bit of a sleep because we are quite tired there we go cave dry and shelter from the wind however you notice a strong smell ah okay follow the smell you follow the smell but are unable to find anything except some tufts of fur and bones okay so return back to the entrance we get some xp okay lie down and have a sleep 
Sleep briefly, 24 energy back. Or sleep for a long time. Yeah, that cuts quite significantly into the day, doesn't it? Let's have a very brief sleep. And then we can get up in the morning and go again. So there we go. Have a little sleep. Energy can top back up. Body temperature can top back up. It's daybreak and there's a storm. There really is a storm. <laughs> I can't see anything, anybody. Um, okay, right. Yeah, it, the weather is. The weather has certainly turned a bit. Um, right, there's us, and we don't look overly happy. Um, let's head up to that. Um, that will take a chunk of energy, but that's okay. Right, head up to there because that is a shiny thing, and I like the shiny things. Um, okay, so let's see what this is. See what that is. Some sort of special thing, I imagine. It's something that gives energy back would be useful. A shrine. You sit down on a rock to relax. A pleasant warmth slowly fills your body. You touch the stone with your hand. It's warm. So warm the ice and snow around it has melted. Why didn't you notice that before? You close your eyes and regain... Ah! Warmth or sanity. Okay, sanity. Warmth. I mean... Yeah, warmth might be better. Seven more warmth. There we go. We've heated up a little bit, which I guess actually is quite a good thing, given the current sort of weather conditions. Um, okay, top of mountain still seems quite distant. Um, where do we go from here? Okay, what if we try to go over in that direction? Then can we get over that way? Or do we have to sort of cut round this now? I'm not entirely sure. I don't know. Can we get to just there? Oh, what's that? That could be tricky to rain right there. Um, okay. There is a cave down there. So we could try and just you know, hide out in the cave and let the storm pass. Or we could just sort of head round the corner. It's very hard to see. Which I guess is the point, you know, because we're on a mountain and it's it's really stormy and unpleasant. There's another shiny thing up there. There is a shiny thing there. But I'm not entirely sure we can get through over there. I think we need to come round this way. Okay. What if we try and made it to you know, head over to that cave? Can we go to that cave and then just have a massive relax? Just have you know, like spend the night in the cave or whatever, or the rest of the day in the cave. Let's try and head over in that direction. Although we are going to pass by this cave here. So we are going to go past this anyway, which will trigger the event, I believe. Okay, another cave. Um, a faint shimmer of light. Okay, let's follow the light. Is it fireflies? Yay, fireflies. We get ourselves some XP and some sanity back. Marvellous. And we've levelled up. We've levelled up. That is very good. Do you know what? Our energy is quite fabulously low. Let's lie down and sleep right here. We might need to have a very long sleep. 40 energy back, please. Um, yeah, let's do that. Let's have a big long sleep in a cave. That's going to take up most of the day. And then, how about then? So there we go. Right, so... Yay! Right, the whole sort of day has passed. If we head back to that cave at night time, in the dark, in a storm, I'm sure it's fine. Don't fall and break your leg. Um, and then go to this cave, and then have a big sleep in here for the night, and wake up in the morning, and then carry on. Our energy should have topped up a bit, and it'll all be fine. Right, a cave! Uh, a strong smell. Okay, follow the smell. Okay, we can't find anything. Return to the entrance. 250 XP. And let's lie down and have a sleep. Can we sleep long? Perfect. Energy topped up, body temperature topped up, and it brings us right to the morning, which is amazing. So there we go. So we'll have a great big sleep in a cave. Don't get mauled by a bear, please, because that will make everybody sad. And there we go. Daybreak. It's a bit cold. Yeah, kind of, kind of expect that with, you know, climbing a mountain and such, but that's fine. And I think as well, do you want to level up right now? Maybe we don't need to level up at this very moment in time. So how about then? There's loads of stuff over there, but there is something right there. Um, oh, that's a very circuitous route. No, let's not go that way. That's all a bit silly. Let's head over there then. I don't quite know what that's saying. That is some sort of hazardous terrain right there that we're going to struggle with. So this could be interesting. Let's see what happens when we go over this. Does something bad happen? No, maybe there's some chance of something bad happening and we looked out there. I don't know. Oh, that's a new spinny icon. Let's go look at the new spinny icon. Okay, spiders. Run away. Ah, run away. Just go. Run. The branches of a nearby bush are completely covered in spider webs. As you take a closer look, you notice several spiders vanishing in a hole in the ground. You bend over to inspect the hole. It looks like there's something hidden in there. Do you want to reach into a hole full of spiders or carry on? I mean, at the moment, that's only going to cost us a tiny bit of sanity. 
I mean, okay, our journalist friend here is much braver than I am. I would not do that, but okay. Put your hand into a hole full of spiders. Spiders skitter over your hands, but they don't hurt you. Your fingertips brush around something soft, a cloth bag. You pull it out and discover provisions inside. <gasps> it's a tent. We found a tent. We can rest anyway. We don't have to go and find caves anymore. Oh, this is amazing. <laughs> that was well worth doing. Okay, good stuff. Yes, please. Take a tent. Put it in there. Do you know what? Let's just do some inventory Tetris. There we go. That is perfect. Oh, that was amazing. Okay, right. Very, very happy with that. Um, okay. It's looking a little bit dangerous around this bit of the world. Let's head over to that because there's an item just there. There's something just there that we might be able to get our hands on. So if we go and grab that and then head over there and then head to there and see what that's all about. A stone plaque. Half buried in the ground, you find a weathered stone plaque. It seems very old. Uh, old, very old, in fact. Stay and dig it up. Oh, that does. Body temperature comes down a tiny bit. We lose a big chunk of energy. But now we have the tent, we can sleep outside. Do you know what? Let's dig out. Why not? Let's see what happens. As you are digging at the earth with your bare hands, your gaze falls on the characters etched in the stone. Presumably some kind of writing system. You regret that you are unable to read the characters. There must have been a civilization here a long time ago. What must have led to their downfall? Finally, you are able to free the plaque and lift it up. In the hollow beneath it, you find some provisions. Okay, so sanity, XP, and a moon herb thingamajig. Okay, take that, pop that into there, confirm that, thank you very much. Uh, right, head on down to there then. So another sort of interaction thing. We are now on dangerous ground over here. I don't really like this. An abandoned radio relay station. Okay, wasn't expecting that. Slightly different to a goat. And you cannot believe your eyes. A fallen antenna is blocking your path. Okay, I stay and look around. Climb over the antenna and continue or take a detour. Let's stay and look around. Why not? We've got an okay amount of energy and we have some food to eat if we need to. Let's have a look around. You are certain that the antenna is from years, from the years of occupation. Presum uh, presumably some kind of radio relay station. But what was it used for? While you are pondering the question, you spot some provisions that have been left behind. Okay, so temperature comes down quite a bit. Uh, we get some XP. Time passes quite a chunk. And we get some oxygen. Okay, right. Handy stuff. Confirm that. And now it's night time. Okay, so let's head over to whatever that thing is here. Let's have some sort of hand type things. Trade! As you step through a rock arch, a giant of a man in a torn anorak suddenly blocks your way. He points at your backpack with a scowl. Is he going to mug you? As if he has read your mind, the stranger starts to rummage around in his own backpack. You're relieved. He only wants a trade. Towering man indicates that he would like to have an oxygen bottle. You should take one of his possessions in return. You take... Ah, okay. We have three of those. We just found one. That's fine. Canned food, a tent, something else where I don't want to trade. Food. Food would be good. Oxygen for food. Thank you very much. Yeah, splendid. Right, there we go. That seemed like a good trade. Okay, so that thing there is a trading icon. Can we... Hang on. Can we get over there? No, we can't. Okay, this way is blocked. Okay, this is a bit of a problem, isn't it now? Can we get round there? We're going to have to go all the way back round. Um, that's not ideal, is it? Okay, you know what? It is night time. It is night time. Why don't we have a sleep in the tent? So we're going to lose a bit of body temperature, but we are in a tent. Hang on, let's do that. So 40 energy comes back, we lose 10 body temperature, we have most of the night in the tent, and then we wake up and we can get on with stuff. Do you know what? Yeah, let's have a lovely sleep in the tent, please. Ah, very nice. I mean, I say very nice. I'd hate it. That'd be one of my worst things ever. But there we go. Right, so we've had a lovely sleep in the tent. And um, yeah, if we could just get to morning so we can see what's going on, that would be wonderful. I mean, can we just head round? Can we even get down to there? Can we just make our way round this? Let's just head over in that direction, I think. Let's just take a lovely walk over to this bit of the mountain. And daytime has rolled around and the weather is clear. So the storm has gone, which is good, because that means we can see things again, which is all very handy indeed. Um, I think as well now, let's level up. Let's level up so we get a new skill. And of course, we top up our energy and everything else, sanity and body temperature a little tiny bit. So let's level up. Oh, we choose another specialization. Okay, so good at night climbing. More experience in events gained during the night. We tend to sleep at night time. 
tend to try and go to sleep at night. Um, steep climber. Oh, yeah, that gives us the that gives us that special skill that we can use. Or flat terrain expert, specialised in moving through flat terrain. Okay, so light steps one reduce energy cost on all terrain. Okay, hang on, that's good, isn't it? On all terrain. It says they're flat terrain. Hang on, that says all terrain. Okay, strong energy efficiency on flat terrain allows to explore the mountain thoroughly. Exploring the mountain for too long threatens your sanity. I mean, our sanity is okay at the moment. I think we have that. Let's have light steps one. Yes, please, absolutely. So now we can move around a bit, you know, a little bit sort of a little bit more efficiently. And yeah, stats are looking pretty good. We've topped some of them up very nicely indeed. Hang on, we can level up again. Have we got two level ups? Okay. <laughs> Wow. Okay, I didn't realise we had a second level up. Marvellous. Okay, so we've got these two choices here. Early Sleeper, which goes with our first specialisation, and then Careful Steps, which goes with the second one that we just took. I like the idea of this. Gain energy when waking up. I mean, I don't know how that works. I guess we just have a little tiny stash of, of tea nearby. And, you know, we have a little tiny bit of tea in the morning and it gives us a little bit of a boost. Let's say it's that. So yeah, Early Sleeper 1, getting more energy when waking up has got to be a good thing because then we have more energy to go and do things throughout the day. So there we go. Splendid. OK, so let's have a look at the current situation. There we are in this kind of little sort of gully down here, surrounded by relatively high rock bits. But that's OK. So we're all nice and happy down there. And then the top of the mountain is just there. That's the peak. That's where we want to get to. So we're about, are we even halfway up? Not really. Oh, we started over there somewhere. We're about a quarter of the way up, I think, if that. I mean, that's me being generous. So I think what we will do is we will finish up for now and we'll come back to Insurmountable and carry on our journey up the mountain. I like this. I do like this. I think this is very nice indeed. So yeah, we'll come back and we'll just see how we get on. But I mean, I've got my eyes on that shiny sort of thing over there. That could be quite good. And then we'll try and work our way up over there. There's some ice over there and such. But I mean, I imagine when we get up to sort of those levels there, that's when we start needing oxygen and such like. That is when it gets a bit trickier. Down here, it's all about, you know, collecting resources and such like, I guess, trying to prepare yourselves for the higher bits of the mountain. So, oh, there's something over there as well. There's another item then we could go and grab that too. So plenty for us to do. But yeah, we'll come back because I like this. I'm enjoying myself a great deal. So we shall pop back and carry on with our journalist friend climbing up the mountain and see how we get on. But we will finish up for the moment. Hopefully you have enjoyed this. If you have, please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in Insurmountable. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard and I will see you next time. I really hope I don't have to send children down into coal mines or whatever because I would feel like a terrible person. Hello, robot, and I shall call you Alan. Still some homeless people, still hungry people, still sick people. Okay, if you try and reach London, you will end up frosty and dead. Great big human lollipop.